in a world wrought with struggle and strife. A world rich with beauty and grandeur. A world where peril lies around every corner. A world of gasting and pony. One group steps up to share the perspective of the masses in this the world of Warcraft. We are Pokecast, the voice of the players. You have crossed into the world of the dead in search of answers. Welcome back. You are listening and or watching Pwncast. This is episode 49 and we are in patch 6.1. I am your warlock host, Belle. I did bring the... <laughs> I, did... I brought people with me. That's who I brought. I did bring my... I did bring my co-host with me. I did bring the mage who's been hiding in the shadows in a pre-skirt, Fryza. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. I, uh... Got dragged down after a couple games, and they, they, someone wanted me to make a Shadow Priest, so I went and made a Shadow Priest, and uh, I didn't buy enough heirlooms, so I only bought the ones that gave the 10% bonus, and I guess that was a bad thing, because when I went to go do dungeons, uh, I was not topping the damage, not even close, and uh, I said, and their biggest thing was like, I don't know why you didn't buy all the heirlooms, and I was like, that's because it builds character. You know, like I don't, I don't want to be too powerful, and so. <laughs> Which is you know, like, it's code for your cheap. <laughs> pretty much, yeah. I was like, why would I want other heirlooms if I'm just gonna replace it later on? They're like, well, you, you gotta, you uh, all this stuff, and I was just like, okay, go ahead and carry me through the dungeon, thanks. You so, know, here's just nothing surprising. So, I know. Yeah, he's doing nothing much, ever changes. He on his, he's doing as much DPS now on his shadow priest as he does on his mage, so it is. That's true. Like, they have their moments. <laughs> So, but that that that's what I did for a little bit. I did that one day, and I'll never go back again. Never. So again. you're done. No, no, I'm done. I'll never. I hate leveling. That sounds horrible. So it's not bad sometimes. I think pretty much the worst thing on the planet I could do right now. <laughs> Ever. Ever. I mean, I I could think of a few things that could be worse, but I, guess. I don't know. <laughs> Nothing Play takes away. apart pieces of my soul than leveling. That's so funny. Yeah. Uh, I did also bring the. <laughs> I did also bring the DK who DC'd and ninja looted the guild raid loot, uh, like him. <laughs> so it was bad. So here we go. We're up in front of Heroic Karyath, and Bell decided to take the time off and said, okay, you're going to be raid leader. Said, okay, cool. So I get in and I give his big speech. I don't take stupidity. I'll call you out if you do something wrong. Make sure you do this right. We can have fun as long as it goes, and then start Karyath. I get the first impel, and boom. I get blue screen to death. Ooh. Needless to say, we had a tank that isn't very well geared, but she filled in and did a wonderful spot. I gotta That's give a shout Zura, out to right? Zura. Yeah, Zura did a wonderful job of filling in. She actually was able to single tank Kargath for the rest of the fight. She did. But yeah, um, it took me, what, about 20 minutes to get back online because of all the updates? I, it, it, yeah, I just remember sitting here. <laughs> I was not logged into game, and I get a phone call from you, and you're like, hey, so I kind of disconnected, and I was like, well, I'm pretty sure the guild just killed. <laughs> the boss. I'm pretty sure you're okay, but I did log into Teamspeak, and uh, yeah, she did handle that. That was pretty. Yeah, was I pretty definitely awesome. gave her credit. For, she did a wonderful job last night. Uh, I did also bring the kitty. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with with Hots for Shots's face right now, but I. Uh, it's my liking beard. I did bring the kitty <laughs> who likes putting balls in his face, Hots for Shots, and apparently also fur in his face. Uh, furry yeah. balls, as it were. Balls that are just amazing. I just like them all in my mouth and just. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Wow. <laughs> it's and just it's all right. We always manage to take it to the we, next level. Just when I think it doesn't get any worse, <laughs> boom, it does. Uh, <laughs> you just gotta leave the salt out. You know, you just can't make it super salty. Well, we're he glad knows how to party. We're glad you're with us. You haven't you haven't been around. I I've been around just in the shadows. Hence mm -hmm. why I'm leveling a rogue and I went kitty. You know, I'm just being sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky. Sneak. I'm being super sneaky. <laughs> I'm trying to startle people. Well, <laughs> well there is that. Uh, we do have, there wasn't a whole lot of, of new, new news, and usually this is the calm before the storm in, in our experience. Whenever we have a few weeks where there's not a whole ton of news, that usually means that Blizzard's up to some type of fuckery, and it's either a whole batch of nerfs or a whole batch of stuff that we don't need in-game before they fix the other stuff, so not really sure what it is they're working on besides the WoW token. Um, but they did announce that the price is going to be $20. This is USD, so this is NA. We don't really know when they're releasing it Europe side yet, but as far as North America goes, it is going to be $20 to purchase the token. 
We still do not know how much it's going to cost to be able to buy it from the auction house. And they did say that it's going to be coming in a few weeks. So I'm assuming they had a Blizzard, uh, they had a Battle.net system, unexpected system maintenance the other day. And I'm pretty sure that they were putting in the backbone for that, for the WoW shop. So I don't know, $20 isn't too terrible. Uh, I you think would, it's a nice shot. Yeah, I mean, you would pay that for, to Gold Farmers anyway, I guess, at some right? point. Yeah. I don't really know how much Gold Farmers are. Not that um, much. They're not I'm that gonna, much. I, I used to look into it just because I was always curious. Um, they, oh, yeah, I, just curious. I want to say it would be about... You just got busted in a lie. I used to look into <laughs> no. it just because I wasn't really serious. No, I really was. Um, because I heard of people spending money on it. I was like, wow, how much are these people spending? And I think it was like 20 bucks for like... Is it about ten, fifteen thousand? No, it's Not like in the even. hundred thousands. Yeah, that'll be a lot, lot more money than that, man. Yeah, because because for four bucks you can basically get a hundred thousand. The problem with those gold farmers is they need your character in game so that they could get you it, and then what happens is your stuff gets hacked, and it's all bad for business because you go to that website and you agree to the terms of service of using that website and making your payment, and the next thing you know, your account has been banned because it's been hacked. And that happens more often than not. I know some of our listeners and viewers have probably been successful with some of their gold farming adventure purchases, but here's the thing. I don't know about you guys, but my WoW account's way too valuable for me to have any kind of issues with anybody hacking. Literally, I mean, you can hack my stuff. Really, what are you going to get? You're going to get some freaking heroic gear. That's what you're going to get. That's it. Mm-hmm. You're going to get some heroic gear, and you're going to get some conquest gear. Woo, freaky hoo, because I'm broke. So, But it's it's a valuable thing, so I think I it's think great. I'm I ready for it. I think people just need to f- stop freaking out about it. It's <gasps> really not that big of a deal. They, they, oh, they freak wow, out about everything. Freak. That's the nature of everybody. They just they don't they they don't know what to do. So fear panics people. And then you have the people that get on their soapbox in the World of Warcraft groups, and they're like, "Everybody's gonna die." <laughs> <laughs> so Warcraft is here. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that naked orc standing in the middle of Orgrimmar with signs on their chest, and the end is near. End is near. It, it's really amazing. not that big deal. If you don't like it, you don't want to use it. Don't no. pay for it. Don't use it. You know, I plan that, on that, that buying that one as soon as they're available. I would like some wild gold. That would be great for uh-huh. me because I do have some purchases that I would like to make. Uh, I don't really know what I want to buy because I don't really have anything in mind. But you know, My thing about I heard it, you were going to buy your uh, main raid leader the Alliance motorcycle. But that's you know, I, just heard. I have enough to buy the motorcycle as we speak. I am sitting at about seven k over what you need to buy the Alliance chopper. Here's the oh. thing: I'm kind of really, really stingy with my gold, and I can't see me dropping a hundred k on it and then having seven k gold left. Like that sucks. So I'll give you a couple k to you know my to no. lessen lessen the shock. It's no traveling tundra. No. <laughs> or whatever isn't the, that what it's called? Traveling. The traveling. No, the the traveling yak. That was oh, the yeah. best one. Yeah. Is that the one you have, Fraza, that has no. the it has the transmogger? The tra- I really need that because you know I won't go into battle if I get a new piece of anything, whether it's PVE or PvP. I refuse to queue up for anything until I've transmogged because I can't go in there. It's very not nice. <laughs> it's very nice not having to go find <laughs> find one. <clears throat> true, true. Also, this week, uh, the final wing of LFR for. Uh, Black Rock Foundry was released. It's Black Hand. I did have an opportunity to step into it. Boy, is there a lot of bullshit going around there. I literally got stuck on the platform where I thought it ported me up. It didn't port me up. It ported me up and then back down, and I was just standing at the bottom like, hey. Then it ported me back up, and everybody was – there was this bars that popped up, and I was stuck in the back. There was these slag – slag work stuff going underneath my feet then all of a sudden there's a big red arrow target on my head i mean it was a it was a huge because like, you know the our guild isn't doing black rock foundry on normal her- yeah. heroic some of them are doing normals but so i've never even seen this boss except for the videos that i watch but there's shit going on how do people do this on heroic and mythic there's so many things going on that i'm like Shit's pouring out. There's there's gold, whatever's smelting. I said smelting. <laughs> is smelting. pouring down from the bottom. Then each phase you drop down, and then more shit's getting thrown at you, and then you have to reach over and kill these siege Wait. makers. And Oh, man. <laughs> You're telling me you have to worry about mechanics in far. No, you really do. I mean, because a lot of people, a lot of people, they we wiped a few times because I mean, you don't have to follow all the mechanics, but the majority, a good portion of the mechanics, you do have to follow. And Which makes it so much easier. He wiped if you quite do. a few times. He and then he says something at the end that I wanted to make mention of. He says that uh, what does he say? He says at the very end that uh, he can't do it without, and then he dies. 
Huh. Yeah. And I'm like, holy cliffhanger, Batman. So if anybody <laughs> has any theories on what this might mean, if any of our listeners or watchers have any theories, I thought this was quite interesting because he literally dies in mid-sentence, and I'm wondering what that even means or if that's leading into another tier content as far as raids are concerned. What Do you, do you already know, Hots? I have a really good theory about it now um, because I've actually killed him on Heroic, and I got my 671 ring. Um, or six, well, no, seven fifteen ring. Sorry. Um, He's like the guy that always manages to bring up how many times a day he goes to the gym. Right. Oh, just getting so buff and <laughs> strong to carry these. All their drugs. Facebook posts are like, on my way home from the gym, I seen a cow on the highway. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, all right. So, I'm trying not to spoil it here. No, don't but, spoil it. Just possible not, theories. Possible theory is they're going to drink the blood of Manor off because. Well, it's, it's already happened. One of the leaders okay. did do it. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it off there. And so I believe him saying it, I can't do it without and then dying is that power. He didn't say I can't. He said he can't. That's what I'm saying. He can't do it without. Yeah. Okay. Well, he can't do it without this. And right. I think it's going to be the power the, that they get from drinking the messed up toxic Mountain Dew. <laughs> I, I, I literally was sitting there after he said that and I was like oh but what does it all mean Basil <laughs> so Way to be stuck. I, I know so I, I don't know it's um but the the raid itself if you hadn't a ch- if you haven't had a chance to step <clears throat> sorry I just went through puberty right there in mid sentence uh, <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to step through through Blackhand it's Fryza have you done it yet you don't do raids uh, no okay. I won't do LFR I was asking the wrong person <laughs> sorry. Yeah, no if I actually went into LFR the day it dropped for that one boss fight because I was super curious as to how people were going to handle it because I killed it the week before on Heroic. And I was like, hmm, I wonder. <laughs> oh, God, there's a lot of stuff was, going was, on. There's I was running around. I you and the floor's dropping and there's people screaming and children are dying and cats are meowing. <laughs> I mean, it's literally <laughs> like a huge... You don't even notice um, is on the second phase, you know, how he randomly loses aggro and he starts attacking random DPS? Yeah. Well, what is actually happening is he's knocking people into the rafter and both tanks are standing in a circle that one tank, only one tank should be. So, if you're a tank and you see him about to do a smash and you don't have aggro, get out of that circle and just taunt the boss right afterwards, please. Ian, I had <laughs> these, you pick up these bombs, the slag, slag work. Oh, you're, bombs. you're not supposed to pick them up. You, you're, you're supposed to leave them there. <laughs> Well, see, here's what happened. I thought you were supposed to pick them up and take them. So I picked them up and took them, and I'm running around the entire freaking raid with the bomb, and everybody's yelling at me. And I'm like, well, I don't freaking know. Why is it here for me to move? You're talking about um, Blast Furnace. Yeah. If, if, if you get a bomb, yeah, you actually are supposed to pick those up. Well, I was and... running around not doing anything with it. So, so, <laughs> did, they, so did they make Alifar a little harder then? Oh, it's yeah. Not as easy. Well, it, for well, Black Rock Foundry anyway. Not for High Mall, but Black Rock Foundry is definitely a challenge. And okay. it's the last, I mean, especially with Black Hand, it's the last boss of that raid tier. So, yeah, it's definitely going to be a little bit harder. But um, I, I've not stepped into LFR because I just I can't handle it. Just I, I, the amount of, like I said, the amount of fuckery that's going on here is just ridiculous. And I will not go back into LFR. Well, I think the thing that pains me about the LFR is, you know, it used to, and I understand it's face rolling, and I understand all the things about it, but it used to be, you know, you would walk in and somebody would say, hey, does everybody know the fight? And somebody would say, no, I don't know the fight. There isn't even any ready checks. Nothing like that happens. You just go, like, for instance, here I am sitting on this platform. I've never been in there before. So I'm standing here. Something drops on me and lifts me up and then pops me back down. And I'm like, I don't understand what just happened. And then I'm here down at the bottom, and then I hear somebody started the boss fight. And I'm like, I'm, I'm in this tunnel. What, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Then it, it popped me back up there, but nobody said, oh, hey, by the way, here's how you get up here. Here's what you – nobody nobody does that anymore. By the way, that's the one elevator boss that you can die to in BRF. Just fair warning. You know, I was just anyway. hanging out. It was me and another guy. He was a mage, and he was just kind of chilling, and we were just like, hey, what's up? <laughs> what's, you know what's really upsetting? This is what threw me off, and I, I, I'm going to go on my little bit of rant here. I stepped into LFR about three, four weeks ago, right? And there I am. We're going to pull the first wing of LFR, ready to go up, heading up to the first boss. And I immediately had the other tank start whispering me, you're gemmed wrong, you have the wrong gems, wrong enchants, you don't know what you're doing as a blood death knight. I'm going, really? So, okay, so we go up to the boss, and I'm saying, the healers that I see, we have, because it's uh, the, the little rock boss that does all the little circle things, right? And you have all Bermog. those ads going up to him. Huh? Bermog. Yeah, or Gorer, that one there. 
Uh, or Gorger, okay. The one that our... you're on the mine. Right, so our healers, they're all having very, um, they have, like, no mana. They're, like, half mana. So we get in there, I hit ready check, and as soon as I hit ready check, there goes that paladin running in, throwing his hammer, boom. Thank God we lived. But, <laughs> but just, you're the is, guy that wasn't gemmed properly. But I'm, right, I'm the one that's doing it all wrong. And, and I absolutely refuse to go in there and be talked about and be shit-talked by a crappy paladin that all he does is run off her well, and be it, done with it. And I need to, I need to, I actually, you brought up a good point, Luke, because we, obviously we deal with this in the raids. Here's the thing. Gems and enchants are not the way that it used to be. There's so many different options for you to stack different things depending upon the different outcome. Example, my PvP stack for my secondary stats is very different than my PvE. So, and this is because for PvP, warlocks were built not necessarily to survive, so I have to overcome those uh, survivability nerfs that happened in order to be able to survive. So you can easily look at somebody's enchants and say, oh, all your enchants are wrong. Can I tell you that a lot of you use Ask Mr. Robot, and when I say a lot of you, I'm talking about the viewers and listeners. Ask Mr. Robot's wrong for Destruction Warlocks. Ask mm -hmm. Mr. Robot tells you to stack crit for everything, and you only need crit to between 10 and 12%. Beyond 10 and 12%, it's useless for you. You need to move on to mastery if you're Destruction. So if you're going based off you're calling out the tank or you're calling out this guy because you think this is what they should have, you're not the fucking boss. You're not the enchant master guru. You don't know if they're trying to theory craft. Maybe they're trying to test something. Maybe they don't want to stack all of one thing because they're trying to spread their power around to different aspects. Really, it's for nobody to be commenting whether or not you have the right gems. I wish a motherfucker would come to me and tell me I'm enchanted wrong because we would really, we would fight about it. But mm -hmm. And even like Fryza for PvP, I'm sure that you probably don't follow what society says you should do. I'm sure you probably no. follow what other mages are doing or even stuff you've probably figured out, right? Oh, yeah, no, I, I go to uh, Jamali or whatever his name is, Jamili, and I'll, I'll look at his armor and Exario and, and Hogman, and I'll look at theirs to see where, where I... What are they wearing different than I'm wearing? Because... And a couple of them will probably be really different. One might stack a certain thing, and one might they're stack... They're all the same. Oh, they're all the same? Oh. They're all the same. Oh. Between those oh. three, yeah. But that's yeah. the thing, too. I mean, when you go up there, I've not, not only do I just run heroics and, and, and orals and things like that. I've not gone into Mythic, but I'm geared for, for high mo Mythic. No, not a problem. But my thing is, is I've done the work. I've done the research. I've gone to Noxic. I've gone to Icy Veins. I see what they do. I've gone to see what the best geared DK tank is. But not only have I done all that, I've done my own research. Yeah, you got to do you know, what's best and, for and you. Right, so but when you step into, into an LFR, who are you to tell me what, one, I'm supposed to be doing there, <laughs> or two, whether I'm geared or enchanted right, you know? Yeah, I, you you want to see if I'm geared right? Come see me solo a couple bosses. It takes two. Agreed. Well, yeah, like, when the tank's like down and, and we can't mm -hmm. even get him up, I was soloing, pulling Femos to one night, and pulling both bosses. We ended up clearing the, bo the boss because I had aggro on both uh, both bosses at the same time because our other tank went down. Right. Come see me do do heroic or regular. Don't yeah. don't don't pass judgment People when you're in. People can theory craft. And right. what were you saying, Fraser, about PVP? I was going to say, you can do what they do in RBGs or arenas, you know, when one person starts calling everybody out, they they all go, well, well what's your achievements, huh? What makes you better than us? And then, boom, he's being wow armored right there, and everybody's chucking out his stuff. He's like, dude, you're only 1650 in RBGs. The rest of your crap is done. You have no achievements. You're nothing. You're trash. Because that one guy is like, oh, we're not doing this right, and we're not doing this, and we're not doing that. And we're like, who, who are you? Who let, are you? Let people's abilities speak for who they are. You know, in right. our raids, well, we don't necessarily go yeah. by item level. We go by, what. Well, show me your skill. Okay, you might yeah, not have as many things, but show me. Will, and, that, and, that's what I'm saying to, and that's what I'm saying to Lycan is he could have posted an achievement heroic <laughs> on this boss right, right there, and the guy would have shut up. And like, because, <laughs> because we were playing with this shaman, right? It was funny because usually in RBGs, no one plays with shaman. It's one of those things you just don't do. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and this one guy, it was about four in the morning, and nobody, not one healer, said we, we need we need one healer. And not one healer has queued up for our team. So we're sitting there like at least 20-something minutes just like pounding our heads like we need a healer to queue for this team. We, we call, I'm going to end it. And so um, so then we get the shaman in there, and uh, I, I accept him, and I say, let's get him on Skype. Let's get, let's get it going. I don't care if he's a shaman or not. So then uh, uh, he comes in, and he's like, oh, this – this uh, team is not the best for winning, but, uh, yeah, we can get it going, you know. He's shocking all his smack, not being mean, just kind of a little, little bit of a prick. And so then, uh, and like then, so, uh, yeah, I know, so, <laughs> then, so, so then we go, well, what's your achievements? He goes, oh, oh, I have every achievement uh, for PvP. I, I have it all. Right. We were like, 
post it. And man, he started posting, and all of us were just, you are our new leader. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, he had every achievement you could imagine. Uh, he's Grand Marshal every season, and, oh, and, wow. uh, and he had, you know, 2900 rated he and we were just we were just like oh my god this guy's a and this uh, is a shaman, best shaman. and yeah. every Elemental game or he, heals heals and every game he topped the tar- the, the the chart every single game no one was even close nobody not even the same ballpark. Sure, like sometimes when we think classes aren't really viable and then we there's somebody really blows us out of the water and we realize we, that it's about skill and what your we, your we adaptation is. Yeah. His his dispels, his CCs and his healing was so, was so subpar. So okay. it was not even close to anybody else. So I if, think was, I was going to say I think we're on What happened to the days where it was nice that you could actually walk into a raid and somebody say, "Hey, would you like some help?" You know, yeah. why not get back to that? When I was doing a Wrath of Lich King, we were going into ICC. I had nothing but help. You know, they all were offering help. But now it's like everybody's got to be a prick about it, and it's just, it, it kills well, And nobody's people. the boss. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're an LFR, really, how great are you to begin with? Right. Um, I mean, I'm pretty awesome. <laughs> I go to LFR, but I go for different reasons, because I'm farming that bullshit that I need for the legendary, the stones that you need in a thousand of them, uh, whatever it is you need, so... Well, I think the biggest thing that kills it nowadays is the fact that you can just queue for it. It's like mm-hmm. Wrath of the Lich King. You didn't have a queue system. I, well, I don't mind the queue system because here's the thing. The queue system is the only reason why I have friends today. Because cool. remember, remember Bell didn't know anybody back then. Bell played by herself, and there was no no pre-made groups or no group finders. Nope. So if you didn't have friends, your ass wasn't queuing for it. You weren't going into an instance cool. unless you were going to solo yeah. it. I'm, so I'm saying like uh, if you like my server, it was – popping back in the day the, the server that i grew up on or yeah grew up on essentially um, <laughs> that was awkward I, I uh, that's <laughs> funny that's funny go ahead but uh it's like um you we put together groups of all these different people and everyone got to somewhat know each other and it's like all right well i've seen this guy around before i've never seen this guy but he, he seems like he knows what he's doing you know whatever and that's how, like, you didn't just go, all right, well, you're gone because you're smart talking to me. Or, oh, you're gone because right. you're bad. Because you don't have anyone to fill that role. It's better to have someone bad and help them than not have anyone at all. Well, I got to disagree about that. Uh, I mean, it's not better to have somebody bad. Well, back in the day, it didn't have scaling. Well, so right. You I mean, have 10 or 25 people. Because there are some people that don't, under, don't get it. Yeah. I'm all for, everybody knows I'm all for everybody can come play. If you're oh, scrub, I, I love you anyway. I mean, because I'm a scrub. So, I mean, really, but I, sometimes bad is just bad, dude. I mean, sometimes yeah, oh, yeah. you really, there's only so much bad you can take before you pull a bell and you have a mental breakdown over rating and you're just like, I'm done for a couple weeks. Uh, I'll be back in a few weeks when I can reset this box up here because I'm getting frustrated because we are a casual situation and we are not the elite of the elite. And sometimes it gets a little waning on the old, on the old fuckery meter and you're just like, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, before I forget, um, the everybody knows that BlizzCon brings the WoW Arena Championships. What we did not know, which I think I might have known this last year, I did not know that the winner of this arena situation took away two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yes, I knew That's it was ridiculous. a lot of money, but I didn't know that it was too. I mean, man, <clears throat> what I could do with two hundred fifty thousand dollars? I'm obviously not on that level because I'm not rated for arenas whatsoever, except for I think I'm at like eight hundred. Those those guys are like. God yeah, I in this game. You watch them. Oh so now God. they're doing, isn't, isn't this the moment where they begin looking at who their prelim people are yes. going to be and who's going to be involved and then they have a, you know, a till death, you know, two men enter, one man leave, and then it just kind of goes up into the rankings, which we watched. Yeah, I believe there's there's a lot of friendships being ended right now. <laughs> no, I agreed. I believe the origin, the, the initial... Uh, invitation to the is if, is invitation only to the tournament. Once you get into the bracket, you're ready to go. But I believe they you know, they go off the top ranked, you know, threes teams. It's okay. Let's invite all these people, and these are the ones that they put into the brackets. But yeah, that would two hundred fifty thousand. We I, I could well live comfortably issue, off that for a little bit. Here's the thing. The though. issue with teams is there's no more teams. They don't have arena right. teams anymore. I so wonder how they, they're going to handle that. Um, I think what it is, and I know they did this in the past, is you sign up for it, and then you make your team once you get in the tournament. For anyone who okay. gets accepted to the tournament, it, you make a team out of that. It's like a pool, and like, all right, well, now we're going to start forming our little cliques. If I'm not mistaken. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars is a lot of money, but you have to consider what's being lost here for that two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Like, 
like Fraza said, friendships have been broken. You've lost your soul at some point because you are so dedicated to what it is you're trying to do to accomplish this $250,000 win that you better hope you win to enjoy that money because your ass ain't got nothing else at the end of the day. You're standing there like... Where'd everybody go? Why am I just sitting yeah. on a milk crate in my apartment? And, and <laughs> Where's people, my wife? Where's my kids? Where is everybody? <laughs> people are children. Uh, they, they, they absolutely are. And, and in arenas, if they lose to some team that is 200 rating under them and they can't, like, comprehend that one loss is okay, they'll end their whole friendships with everybody. Like, we should never lose to a 2K team. And I can't believe you guys allowed me to lose to them. And this is impossible and all this stuff. And boom, they're – rage quitting and people are leaving yeah, and it happens in RPGs all the time you know you'll play against a 2200 rated team and you beat them and you know on and you're only 1750 and you know on their team there is people rage quitting over there right. they're like already. oh this is bullshit this is yeah, bullshit this is we lost to a 1700 team this is stupid you know and and so people are just people man they're gonna end so many friendships over this but whatever I don't care uh, I wanted to I wanted to do a little bit of a a shout out. There was something that was released. Uh, everybody knows that I like to go to MMO Champion. A lot of times that they they do cover add-ons and stuff that allow me to to test and different things that allow me to be able to pull information for the listeners to help them. But what I stumbled upon was uh, Symphonian Artist. I think is what I've decided his name is. He actually posted some pictures of a mock-up of redoing the mobile armory for World of Warcraft, which I, from what I understand about the article, that he did approach Blizzard uh, regarding taking this over, but the interface is beautiful. It's clean. I like it. Uh, he did add garrison mobility inside of it, which obviously Blizzard's went on the record several times by saying that they don't foresee that to be in the future. However, we've proven that when the fans bitch, cree, scream, cry, and moan that they get whatever the hell they want. So when players oh, start complaining on forums, then all of a sudden things start happening and changes start getting made. Unless you're a warlock or a mage. Uh, <laughs> you're a warlock. If you're a warlock or a mage or your name is Tiffany and Amber, you are not getting anything from Blizzard, but I'm just kidding. Um, so I'm going to make sure that I post it on the PwnCastDailyQuest.com, and I can throw some images right here. But it's pretty cool the way that he did it. He actually completely redesigned the app, and I just wanted to, to just make a little shout-out there. And maybe Blizzard will be smart and pick this up and say, hey, this guy really, really, he's doing a thing here. We should make that, we should, we should buy it like we do so many of other people's add-ons that we buy and tell them they can't use it anymore because we like their stuff and we were Why too non-creative to come up with stuff. stuff. What? Why can't we do garrison well, stuff? Well, because they that stated be they awesome. stated that for, as of this moment, it's slated to be uh, World of, Warlords of Draenor only. They don't plan on taking the garrison stuff outside of this expansion. Okay, at least... Fine. At least that's what they've been saying. Do I really think they're going to have people do all this stuff with the garrisons and then be like, oh, well, by the way, just kidding. <laughs> what we did with the farms. Yeah, the true. farms of Mr. Pandaria. Elida those loved those big. farms. Fraser, do you remember that? Elida loved his oh, farms. Oh, he lived there. Lived there. Hours getting that farm ready. She was very species. offended when he found out I didn't farm. He's like, what do you mm -hmm. mean you don't farm? You're not exalted with the tillers? No, no, no. <laughs> Killers are. I'm just farming. It was, it, they're they're, they're going to leave the garrisons, and they're going to try to make one better. Either they're going to make another one, and it's going to be horrible, or it's going to be a lot better, or not give you one at all, which I kind of hope really so, too. Maybe adult. something that's making it a little I less mundane. I'd like to see something a little less mundane. So maybe I went, I, went to, I went to Mr. Pandera today to go practice on the dummies because those dummies are a lot better to hit because they're in a better location. And uh, there's no lag happening in Storm Shield because of multi-bots. Uh, I missed, I miss Mop. Yeah, so you, you really never knew how good you had it. When everybody complained about Mr. Pandaria and they're like, oh, this sucks. And I then, was one of them. I was one of them. I, I hated that game. I and, liked Mr. Pandaria. And I miss it so much. But I was ready for something new and fresh. Garrison's, yeah. everything that Wad was was a mistake. But... They are, I will give Blizzard this though, is they, they don't have blueprints for any of this. They are one of the only games doing this. And they're, they're doing what they think, and if it makes a, a big mistake, the problem is, is it takes about two years to correct that mistake. So, you know, it's one of those things where we just have to hold on, hope the next game they don't do what they did in WAD, and I think they learned. So. But they're doing it. They're putting their concepts that they're having. They have forward thinkers, even though it might just be free working right. interns. But they ha you're right. They have right. people that are... There's no blueprints for this. There's no one saying, don't make a game like this. There's no right. one 
telling them they're that. jumping off a fucking cliff and praying to God that everybody jumps with them yeah. or that there's a safety net at the bottom because they don't really know what the outcome is going to be. Yeah. Nobody can really say, well, I would love this until it's actually tangible in front of you. Yeah. Ashram probably looked amazing on paper. They're probably like cheering in the office like, oh, this is going to be the best thing we've ever made. <laughs> you but know, but, you know. <laughs> and here's the thing, too. I mean, you, you kind of hit the nail on the head there, Sam, or Bell, whenever you said, hey, look, um, you know, they listen to the players, and they, whenever they want to cry enough, they, they get what they want. But it works, and it always worked with Blizzard. And Blizzard knows how to take what the fan feedback is, and they throw something new out there. And, yeah, it may not be the big thing right then and there, but they are able to take that, and they are able to transform it into a working thing. I hated the idea of Garrison's at first. I thought it was going to be stupid. I thought, okay, I'm going to have to be there. I'm going to spend all my time there. Now right. when I log in, I love the ability to log in and going, this shit is mine. You know, this it's is very my, personal. You know, right. I, I, I love the, and, I have and, over 55 followers, you know, that I, I have 30 of them just sitting there. Wow, somebody's, I don't have a life meter just went off <laughs> in a full blast. Well, most yeah. of it is from the end, because the end you get a follower a week, and I've gone out and got all the special ones, and, and I'm, I'm a completionist, I have to do, I mean, I'm not going to get all 230 something. It requires grinding of any sort, I don't do it. So right. <laughs> you're talking to the wrong person, if I got to do a daily, it's not happening. But is it, maybe this don't is leading into player housing when we go back towards Azeroth, because, you know, depending on where it's going to go next, whether we do come back, to, I believe... The next expansion, we will be back in Azeroth somewhere. I'd like to see a guild housing. I'd really right. like to see them move in the direction of guild housing. That uh, would be better, right? Be or harder. you had a you had a portal or a hearth to go to your to the guild, and there's all your people, and I, you're I, chilling. I was gonna I was gonna say this that that although I I hope they don't bring a garrison back, I hope they leave that out of the next the next expansion. I I will say that it has become personal because when you're in groups. Uh, especially like RBG groups, people wander into your garrison because they can just go to the leader's garrison. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because when they do that, you're like, get out of my garrison. Like, like why well, don't right. I know you? Like, you know what I mean? You, like, why, why are you, are you stirring in? my food on the stove? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, like, why are you in my garrison? And you start looking like for your stuff to make sure no one's taking anything. You know, and it's like, it's like, why do I even care? But because it became personal to you, mm -hmm. and I will, I will admit, I have fell under that. Under that, uh, my garrison is mine. Stay out of it. Or you have to <laughs> people that herb your flowers. <laughs> they won't do it. They can't do it no more. Before they fix it, that was the thing. He Fryza came into my garrison and he started going up and started taking my flowers. I said, "What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> I don't. I don't you know, know what he's talking about. The flowers out of my garden. Right. I so, oh, I thought about. they were my flowers. Oh, you thought this <laughs> sign above the head that says my garrison was yours? Right. Oh, that was dying. That was so funny. Oh, God. And I remember That's... after that incident, I was really paranoid whenever I was leader of the group and I would make sure that my stuff was mined and my stuff was herbed before. This was in the very beginning when the stuff wasn't so wasn't I so overflowing. <laughs> I, just... I still do that. Every day. Every day. I'm in, I'm in a 10 man group. I go, and harm, I go and farm all my stuff before I do anything. Because uh -huh. if, it, if it does glitch out, I'm no, no one's taking my hex weave. Right. That stuff's like that stuff's like crack to me. I don't I don't know what to do. <laughs> well, we did. So there wasn't a. That was pretty much for the news portion. So now we can move into our week weeks and wow. Before we do that, I wanted to make sure uh, I wanted to make sure that I did a shout out to Elida. Elida did welcome a beautiful baby uh, oh, into the world. Which for those of you who did not know, that was the real life aggro that did take Elida away from Pwncast. There was a another mini Elida. Uh, level one human on the way, and they did have a very successful birth. Uh, what What's the name? Amorous. Amorous. Gorgeous, gorgeous baby. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Elida has very beautiful children. Uh, really, he is not beautiful himself, but his children <laughs> are. A, he, you know, he's <laughs> surprised that will tell you. He looks like me, guys. Well, uh, they are twins, uh. but they have the same smile. It's kind of creepy. But congratulations to, Eli to Elida and uh, to the new mini and Mrs. Elida. And I'm sure that the – because he has two girls and a boy, right? Yeah, two boys and two girls now. Oh, okay, oh, wow. so now he has two boys and two girls. Yeah. So he's pretty much – it's over for him. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> we'll revisit this when your daughters are 16 and you want to kill yourself. But uh, yeah. we're glad yeah. that everything is healthy and we're really, really happy on your new adventure. Yes. That uh, the new mini is going to take you. Well, right, right. <laughs> Nine months at the character creation screen for that matter. Uh, we – we uh we we were talking to him, me and a couple other uh, of, of my buddies, and we want we wanted to see what what his gear was at. So we invited him into our party, and uh, he was all, uh, "Well, I can't heal you guys. I'm not geared." And we we're like, "Well, he's got to be like what six forty, you know, something like that." And he's all, "No, no, I'm six fourteen. I only I only have I have a couple greens on, and, and at that time he didn't even do the silver." 
the silver turn to begin. And I thought, what is wrong with you? And then I remember, I was like, oh, that's right, he has a life. <laughs> yes, kids was, and, and a wife and a job and yeah. things that, yeah. But it was just so sad because I felt so, I was like, I want to log into your character and get you gear. Like, I want to, like, help you so bad. I feel so, I feel so, I feel so bad for him because it's like he's 614 item level. He's like trying to heal you as much as he can. And, he, and he's a really good healer, but nothing you can do when you're wearing green greens. I love that but. no matter what's going on in his life, when he is able to log into game, he makes sure that he takes care of the bank. Because whenever I go into the <laughs> bank, I always see a light and move this because he's a real, like he's like the bank Nazi. He's very organized, which I'm not, so I appreciate that. And that's one of the reasons he's our bank meister. But I, I really appreciate that in between bottle feedings and changing really disgusting newborn poop that he still <laughs> logs in to do the bank. Uh but anyway, so I just wanted to make sure that we did shout that out because that was very, very exciting news. We love babies. Uh, I don't want to have any more, but we do love we do love the babies. So let's move on to the week in WoW. Fraser, what did you do this week? Uh, not much. I'm, I'm running away a little bit. From, I am going away a little bit from the arenas at the moment. Uh, it's either run a comp or don't do arenas at this point. Um, and when you say comp, you're referring to God comp specifically, right? I I, I, I want to run God comp because I'm a frost mage, but I, I, I can also run, uh, I think it's WMD, w warrior mage, druid, or whatever. Either way, you, uh, there's a lot of comps out there, and you go to, uh, I believe, Reddit or a few other websites that actually give these these lists out, and uh, try to get these comps going, because if you really want to push rating and you really want to get serious, find three, two of your buddies, including yourself, and run a comp make characters say this is the comp we're going to run either you have to re e either you have to create that tune and level them up and gear them up but your friends will stay with you find people that you're going to play with and you know are going to be on when you're on uh you can pug for arena but what sucks about that is i have a lot of experience with this lately is you can pug in a group and do very well and you guys win almost every game and then you never see them again and so, if you are going to run a comp, don't, don't pug for arenas. Huh? I know it's sad, Bell, but don't cry. <laughs> I know. So, so just just find a comp. And, and Reddit, uh, they have the comps, the comp list, yeah, man, there's probably about 100 different comps you can run. And uh, find one that's going to suit you and your friends. Find out what it does. Find out what's the strong points in it. Uh, the list, I mean, there's, there's Ebola Cleave. Which is a, a feral, unholy, and a healer. Turbo cleave, kitty cleave, African turtle cleave, TSG, which is everybody's doing TSG. Yeah, that's Do that's they have DK a warrior. And there, there, the list goes on forever, guys. The the list. Can I zoom in? That's how many groups. That's how many of these things there is. Uh, there's Scooby Doo cleave. There's Cupid. I mean, I mean, the, it goes. There's there's even a, a Hitler cleave, which is two. Unholy DKs and a healer, and then Stalin Cleave, which is two Frost DKs and a healer. Um, there's right, Harry Potter Cleave. Right now. And they're, <laughs> they're just making up stuff. Those are those are ones that are made up, but there is official ones that you can go look at on the same list. And it does kind of tell you which ones are made up and which ones are real. But uh, find the real one. Find ones that people are using on Twitch. Find ones that people are using for the tournaments. And uh, get your friends together. And... Level up, climb that ladder, and it may take some time, but uh, it'll be a lot easier if you're running a comp that is made to be with each other. And so uh, if you want to do that, if you want to spend hours upon hours, get with if get with the rating comp. pushing is what it is you're going for, obviously this yes. isn't for the casuals or people like me. No, just kind if you, of if you just want to hop on with your friends, go ahead. And I but... agree, we've... We talked about this, uh, just talking about it with somebody yesterday, and although everybody knows I've been anti anything that requires me to have to change just to enjoy my gameplay and to be able to do what I want right. to do, and I don't want to be told, right. well, you're not, you're not viable for what I need to to be successful. So with that, I don't really give a shit. I'm going to stay destructive till the day I die. But there are those that really, really want to push, and. It is effective to make sure that you have me and my husband were arguing about this yesterday because he was telling me that it was effective and I was pretending that I didn't agree with him because uh, I always have to be anti anything that people are saying just because that's just me. But and it is it is a lot more effective because I as a warlock survive a lot better with a different set of people than I do another set of people. And I notice this going back and forth in arenas that sometimes right. I'm not as successful if I'm with somebody different or like I'm really, really good. Vegas has a 
when Vegas is on his DK or his mage when we're doing RBGs, me and Vegas can go and cap. We can solo cap something that has five or six there. We can go and we can take it or we can hold it. But, I, I mean, I agree, too. If you're trying to push rating and that's what it is you're going for, then, yes, you know, comp's the way to go. You're going to have to find a comp and find friends that are going to stay with you. But this is where I'm going to disagree with you because I ran into a – we went into a freeze the other day. It was me, Vegas, and Dark. So you're a hunter. Pa- you're oh, a wait, hunter. Wait. It was a holy pally, a ret pally, and a oh, – what am I – I'm Beastmaster in, in, in arenas and a BM hunter, and it worked. And everybody saw – you know, even whenever the other two, oh, well, I don't know if it's going to work. I said, well, let's just try it. It worked. Well, and I think it's skill level too. Not, right. it, but not the everybody, styles, not everybody would be able to pull that off. Like in right, I mean, but if you know the playing styles of the other people and you're friends with them and you know them well enough, it, and it'll you know take you their character s- enough. We had that, no problem going in there, and I bet you we could push a rating with a, with that group. You could it'll, push maybe two K. Yeah. I, I will, I will say you could push two K. We're talking about twenty five hundred. And I okay. think that might be yeah. something I never understood. I never realized there was a life beyond two K. So things change. Oh yeah, two K. You're still, you're still. And, a, a and I'm you know, like, and I'm like yeah. you. I'm the kind of person that's just like, why do, why can't I just play what I want to play, and right. you just love me and be my friend and play with me anyway? Because I'm not what you need me to be. But at the and, at the same time, understanding that beyond that two K cap, it does. It's different rules. Sometimes you can't drag your friend well, along the friggin' for, river. For an example, for an example, you know, I watch a lot of Twitch and a lot of YouTube from Bajura and, and Hansel and all those guys. And it's funny because they'll run uh, their same group. They run on every single thing that they do. They never change. And uh, you recognize the names of their friends. And then uh, you watch them, and it was funny because they're so, they're so quick to say the other team's going to lose because they're not running the right person. And they'll say, oh, look at this team. Uh, they're 2,100 or whatever, dude. That's, that's, they're going to get smoked. And then they well, usually I, do. But, and but, then, or, or they'll say, oh, they're running a warrior and and uh, a mage or something, and they're running a shaman healer. That's the wrong healer, and then well, they lose big time. But it's but like just RBG because they're playing guy. with, huh? Your RBG guy, the, the one, the, the shaman. Oh, he's a resto shaman. Oh yeah, this is really not right. Work, but, but when you go to these high, right no, it doesn't right. work that way in a. Arena, no. Uh, arena arenas, right arenas is, uh, and, yeah. and I don't like to defend. Everybody knows that I'm very anti. Yeah. I'm very anti. I have to be a certain thing to fit into a box. But in in here's what's happened with me doing RBGs with the guild. Yeah. I don't like to just sit on the sidelines. So even though I have people that are in charge of the RBGs, I like to know what I'm talking about, and I want to be able to do callouts, or I want to be able to do these things and be trusted to do so. Uh, the things that I've been watching and the things that I've been learning and, and understanding is. As much as I want to say, fuck off, just take the Warlock with you, please don't leave me behind, I understand that once you push that 2K, that it is a whole different set of rules. And if I'm not on point with my stuff, nobody's going to take me anywhere. They're going to leave my oh, ass at home. I'm gonna, so, I want to go ahead, go ahead, Hots. I, I, got, I got a perfect solution for this. All right, so you have you have 1,700 rating, where if you're good and the two people you're playing with, no matter what they're playing, if it's a perfect comp or if it's a really bad comp, but they're really good at what right. they do. You'll push up to whatever rating. You can win all the time if the people that you're playing against don't know what they're doing. But if you have people that know what they're doing and they're playing a god comp and you're playing a bad comp but you know what you're doing, they're gonna, they should win every time. Right. They, yeah. Sure. That, yeah. Well, if, Not, if they're 2K, they hold know on, how to win. Hold on. Right. Hold on. Go ahead. Done. Now, whenever you hit that 2K mark, now you need people who are good and know what they're doing and then – you need to make certain comps in order to win. Because everybody can other, get 2K is what you're everyone, saying. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, whenever you get up to, now you see 2.5, 2.7, you see people like uh, Hansel, um, n- n- any person that's really well known in the community and really high rated, they can play with anybody, but you're going to see them make certain comps. Because oh, past yeah. 2K, you're going against because, those people that are in God yeah. comp. That's why you better have a God comp because you're you not going to gonna have, survive. You need to have a certain level of damage, a certain level of CC. Like if you have a warrior, they don't have a whole lot of CC. So you need a mage because they have all kinds of CC. Yep. You, need a and rogue, you have to have a druid. You have all kinds of CC. And you need to have a druid because warriors are all over the map. And Druids is really that the only healer that can That does not mean that skilled players yeah. cannot overcome, yes. and I think that Correct. was like in exactly. the point on the back end. And that's my thing. I want to see – I want to challenge our our viewers and our listeners. I want to see somebody get 2.5 rating. Get me a comp that is the Look terrible comp. Look at Price's face was like, what did you just <laughs> say to me? You know, I don't care if you're running three prot warriors. Get me a comp <laughs> that doesn't <laughs> – no. <laughs> no. And I want to see that at 5K. You I've have? seen people blood DK hit 2.2 2 
And I, uh, I, I, there, there is a group of there, there, there is a group in twos doing two blood decays right now. There is, and they are doing somewhat. They did they did successful, and then now they were, they were just poops on them. But yeah, they, it is what possible to hit a certain the limit. The team's gonna give up because it's freaking twenty minutes later. They're still trying to kill two. F- that's, that's the, the thing, and that's that's the once thing. You, is, that's once you hit uh like twenty one, twenty two hundred rating this- games. You gain like one or two points we for a win. An RBG but you with lose five like healers. We went yeah. against a team in RBGs with five healers. How do you win against half their team? Was literally you, no matter where we were in Warsong Gulch, there was at least two healers with that group. Whether it was kill team, defense team, or or uh, what did what did you they call out, it? The, you outrun them then. You well, CC well, the healers. Then yeah, that would be awesome. See, I wish no, I went teams that had that many healers. No, don't even CC the healers. You CC the DPS because now they only have what two sure. D, like say a kill team. Yeah. They have yep. two DPS and two healers going with them because they have so many. You CC the DPS, nothing's dying. So yep. with, <laughs> with with PVP, just like with PVE, do everything in moderation. And here's why: because we did stray from the weekend wow, which I can talk about my weekend wow real quick, and then get back to the other two because it does kind of roll into that. With With understanding yourself and what it is you're trying to push, if you're trying to move in from being casual to something serious, just know that there's a price you pay. For every stance that you take in game and the things that you do, things aren't going to come easy for you. If you're making that choice, then you have to take the good and the bad that goes along with it. If you want to take that choice to take your gameplay to the next level, you need to be ready for sacrifice. You need to be ready for all that goes along with that and to understand that it's a whole different ball game. It's, to be humbled. To be humbled. You know, it's be a ready. Whole, it's a whole different ball game. But this, this week, I took a little bit of a step back. Not not necessarily a break from WoW, but I took a step back kind of from all of my projects that I do, which, you know, you guys are our listeners and our watchers. You guys know what we do here at Pwncast. I t- kind of took a step back myself and kind of reevaluated some of the things things that I'm interested in. Obviously, you guys know that I've been, you know, I stepped back into PvP, not really so much the arenas, because I'm still, I'm still a little, I'm not really confident, because I don't ever run with the same set of people, because everybody's kind of scattered, and I just run with who's on at the moment, and, you know, I feel more comfortable with a certain set of people, you know, if, if my husband's on, and he's on his, his pally, I usually feel pretty comfortable with that, but, I mean, it's really difficult for me to adjust that way, but, I took a, just a little bit of a step back to reevaluate what it is that Bell wants to do in the game. What are the things that I wanted to accomplish? Where do I want to be the next PvP season, the next tier for raiding? I took a step back from raids only because I just needed to refresh and kind of reboot my box up here. Uh, it, it does get a little bit. We took a casual guild and we made parts of that guild serious for those that were interested in doing the serious. And I realized that... Um, Sacrifices happen when you make those kind of changes. You you sacrifice what you used to be, which is every, you know, we all go play whether we suck or we don't. And then you realize that when you want to start advancing that, you know, sometimes you have to make decisions that suck. And mm-hmm. with the rating specifically, I have a hard time telling people, sorry, you can't raid with us because your DPS was under the benchmark in order for us to be able to down this on heroic or, or whatever the case may be. So I took a step back. And allowed my raid leaders to be the ones that could make those decisions as the guild master. I don't have to be doing all that and 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 worrying about all that. And then you know, you with, don't need to be the bad guy. No, and but sometimes <laughs> the thing is, I it's it's hard yeah. letting go. It's hard giving control to other people. But and that's not a bad thing. It's just it it's just difficult when you're the guild master that's lived and breathed the freaking guild for two years. It's just rough to kind of step back, but necessary. But in the in the grand scheme of things, what I found over this last week is I kind of found my Zen, uh, and my Zen has been very very clarifying for me. And what it is that, and I have a point here, I promise. It's been clarifying, very very clarifying for me to to see where where my future goes. And I've realized things change, and they change so rapidly in the game between people you're with, between your guild, between the people that you play with every day, the people you may not play with every day, things change so much. And I think that I realize I might have a problem with that. I might not be okay with the change. So understanding that when you're taking a different viewpoint of something you want to do in World of Warcraft specifically, there are a lot of parts of it that are very serious. PvP is very serious to a lot of people. It's really difficult when half of your people are very serious about it and you're just over here like, I like this hot dog because that's, (laughs) you know, and understanding that that it, it can become taxing on a person. So if you're making that step, 
you want to start doing and you want to take, Fries has got really great tips as far as doing arenas and picking your right comp. If you want to take that, just be prepared for what comes along with it because sometimes it blindsides you and you never recover. I'm not saying anything specific, but sometimes it happens. And it's the same thing with raiding. I see so many of my friends that used to be hardcore raiders and literally don't do anything in game anymore because the raiding broke them. The struggle to try to get through Mythic and to try to really be a tryhard, they weren't prepared for what goes along with that and it literally broke them. It broke their friendships, it broke everything they had and now they log in and do their garrison stuff and it sucks for them. Be prepared, know what you're stepping into and be, be, be ready to be strong enough to be able to handle it because it can be done, really. But that's all I did this week. I took a step back and I just re, re realized who Bell is and what some of the things that Bell wants and what's enjoyable to Bell and, and these kind of things. And sometimes you have to do that. So if you're like me and you've been struggling with just yourself and the different aspects or why you still love WoW or give me the motivation, why am I even here? Why do I log in? Sometimes you just have to stay, take a step back and look outside the box and find parts of WoW that you loved and remember that and hold on to that. So that's really. <clears throat> That's what I did this week. I went a little, I went a little serious, but it really isn't that serious. It's just Fryza had a, had made a good point. You have to be, you have to be ready for what it is that you're asking for within yourself. And Hots, you dealt with this with raiding. You went all in with this guild, yep. and you, you went balls to the wall. We didn't even see you for a month, literally. <laughs> I didn't even know you were still alive. I thought you were uh -huh. dead. Yeah. So, and how's that going? Let's talk about your week. Uh, I hit about a point like you did. Uh, no kidding. Um, I, for the past few weeks, I've been struggling to find effort to uh, the, wanting to put effort in a raid because I've I've gotten so fed up with wiping every week on the same thing over and over. And finally, you get it, and you're like, yes. And then you like two minutes later, after gears pass out, you may or may not get anything. And then you go to the next boss, and you're like, ah, oh. ready to do this. Yeah, and, yeah, and I mean, like, it's fun. It has to have people that you enjoy doing it with. And with my guild, I do have those people. But another side of it is, since I've started the whole streaming thing, whenever I stream during raids, my attention isn't on raiding. It's on the stream. Because that's where it needs to be. So I'm trying to find a good balance of half and half, and it my my raid leaders are starting to notice it. They're like, hey, you're streaming, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah, why? What's up? They're like, you're taking more damage than you usually do. You're standing in crap. I'm the guy in the guild that has a little special marker that says everyone stacks on this guy and moves when he moves. And whenever I whenever I mess up, a lot of people get messed up. Hey, hey, look yeah. at me. Oh. Guess what? I'm that guy now, all right? You <laughs> thought you were cool? Guess who that guy is in the raids? I'm the guy with a freaking marker where everybody stands on the protect us. This guy right here. <laughs> Right here. I'm, I'm, the guy. <laughs> I'm the guy who does it for black hands. So, oh, you know. well, I'm, we're not there yet. <laughs> you, I got you, you on Tectus. That's about it. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but no, seriously, um, Bell makes a really good point. But other than that, I've just been finding what I like about WoW. I, remember, I, um, right? You have to go yeah, back to yeah. basics, right? You yeah. started over. You rolled a new tune. You have to just remember what you first loved about it to get your love I back. Took my tune and put it put it in a different aspect. I went kitty. I went bear at one point, and I made a post about this on the Facebook page, and I had someone like like it. Like, hey, you should go do all this stuff. You shouldn't be doing this. And I was like, link achievement. By the way, this is what you're doing wrong. <laughs> right. And then at the very end of <laughs> <laughs> and then at the very end of it, I put puts try hard bet or puts elitist wannabe badge on, and then walks away. Like, <laughs> here's like drop mic. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, it's like, dude. And so, I'm finding that want again with uh, with raiding. I've had fun outside of it. I'm level on a rogue. I went kitty spec. I'm having fun with it. You know, I just gotta find the want to raid again. So. And well, it, we also sh struggle with the same thing in, in arenas or RPGs. You know, if the group's really high level, you know that no one's going to die, and you know that you're going to be sitting there at Blacksmith for 10 minutes trying to cap that flag, and you just want to quit so right. bad. Yeah. Right? The game the gate hasn't even opened yet, and you know that you're going to be at Blacksmith for 10 minutes or 15 minutes before <laughs> anybody ever caps it, and you're just going to be like... We're sitting at the table oh. doing absolutely zero DMHC. <laughs> <laughs> I know. That was me last, last week. Uh, that's hunters for you, though. Yeah. That's all they do. Pop out of a the camouflage, they see me, turn around, and run away. Yeah, but, but, yeah I, I struggle with the same thing, though. I just, you know, you're just like, why do I keep doing this again? <laughs> this is getting ridiculous. You know, especially you get with those, those 2K healers. They don't like to die, nor do they like to uh, let their friends die.
Mm-hmm. So they get they get pretty hardcore. They don't like to. So That's what you, you just gotta like, remember. You remember those times when it was fun for you, and you remember what's different, what's changed. That's what I had to do this last week. What's what's different in my well life that wasn't eight months ago? Where where have I? What's changed up? Where I'm no longer happy within myself? Not not just happy with wow. I love wow. I, I would never, but just what's. When, when did when did Shadow Priest start destroying you know, everybody? Uh, you know, and, and Jesus. It's a thing that I see. It's pretty common in the WoW groups. I see people, you know, I want to unsub, but WoW is not the same, and, and people forget that things change, and sometimes you have to fight. Sometimes you have to fight for things to stay the same, or you have to fight to 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 go back to what it was that when it was, what's that? It's one of my favorite songs, Getting Back to Good. Has anybody ever heard that song? Not yeah. really WoW related, but it's really in that sense of, of realizing at what point was it this way and what changed or what was moved around or what what's what's happened since then and take it back because it doesn't matter how poorly an expansion went or what they've done in game at the end of the day it it really is who is there kind of at this at the same token is your guild still there do you still have the same people in your guild do you still have the same people that you play with although it does change because people have lives stuff happens but really just getting back to that getting back to that aspect that made it fun for you Make the most out of the bad, you know? Agreed. Like, you can sit around and mope about it, but if you really love WoW, you just, you, you're like, all right, well, this sucks, but I'm still going to do it, and I'm just going to have a good time doing it. Okay. You know? And see, yeah. that was actually forced upon me in September. I, you know, I lost my guild. Um, I came from a hard, hardcore guild where we, we were pushing, you know, server first. Uh, we weren't top ranked in, on, on all the realms, but, you know, it was three nights of raiding, and it was three and a half to four hours per night. And then I would do pick up raids on a weekend. So, I mean, it was like every night I was in a raiding. I had to do something for a raid. But, you know, and then I get, you know, I say, hey, I'm going to move my DK over here so I could be in riders. And they removed all my tunes. So now here I am in a, in a guild that doesn't really raid, that has no intention at the time to go any type of progression raiding. What he's and, saying is the writers are scrubs, and I'm okay with well, that. No, that was right in the beginning. No, that's not what <laughs> I'm saying. It just, I'm going from this guild that, you know, really pushed at the time with all heroic. We weren't trying hard. Status. We weren't trying. And then now I'm sitting here in a new guild, going, okay, what do I do? What yeah. do I do? You know, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of happy we're going towards that progression rating. I I'm mean, yeah, we're already doing balance, heroic. The balance of where I want to allow people right. to come and play of all statures, whether they're really, really good or maybe they're really, really bad, I want people to be able to come and play because I hate disincluding people because it sucks. But right. at the end of the day, then you realize that sometimes you have to because then other people have to suffer their progression for the faults of others. And that's really, you know, it's... it's, it's I hate it. It's like being <laughs> picked last, last for baseball. Like, <laughs> man... <laughs> But anyway, that's our that's our advice this week. This week, what I want everybody to do, and then we're going to move on to Ligon's, uh what he did this week in WoW. I want everybody's homework to be p- comment on the video, comment on the web page, email me, tell me where your love for WoW is. What is that one moment? Where you said, I love this game. Was it the people you hung out with? Was it a story? Was it a quest line? Tell me what you, what made you fall in love with this game. Comment. That's your guys' homework this week is to remember the core of what you loved about World of Warcraft. So that's that's homework. Everybody better do it. I want to see some comments on this video. I want to see some emails. I, wa- I want to see, I want to know what you, the listeners, think about what, where was your love at? And this could be many, many years ago. This maybe you met a hooker and well, I don't really know what you people do. If that's oh yeah, I mean no. it's <laughs> that's Fry's kind right of party. Before. You know what I mean? If there's a hooker and a stripper pole, Fry's is like yes. Uh, Sign me up twice. No, <laughs> he's probably already signed up. He's probably auto signed up based off of keywords. <laughs> he's got a strip in the middle of his garrison, right on top. Of that him. is too much. Uh, like I met a hooker. You, now I call her my ex. Like oh. what did you do this? <laughs> Uh, really not much. I did the raid. Um, I've been doing a lot with my hunter and did a couple twos with Vegas. Uh, he runs now a holy pally. And last week we got him pretty much geared up, um, which was pretty cool. We go actually the, the funny thing this story. Uh, we go into a twos raiding. We're in Dalaran sewers, and we're going up against a Mistweaver monk and a assassination rogue. Mm. I'm going. Oh, okay, this is going to be fun. And the fight lasted for 15 minutes. Yeah. After 15 minutes, we didn't even technically win. 
they slashed AFK and walked out of the game. Those monks won't die. That's wow. Yeah. Like every- well, it, that 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 uh, comp would suck because the second the rogue was dying, he gets shielded, or he's or the monk's out of a shield, and the monk and the rogue just goes invisible. Yep. Right. Uh, to kill to kill any of those guys is going to be uh, yeah a hard time. You have to do and something. Then you have to do something. You had me as a beastmaster, and I had a holy, a holy pally. That's you know, I mean, he he, he never went down seven, below seventy five percent mana. I mean, he he really for as undergeared as Vegas was at the beginning when he first started. I'm going okay, this is going to be real fun. He, I tell you what, he does an awesome job with her because he never went below, and that's why they quit. You know, they slash high five us and slash went slash AFK, and that was it. They were gone. That's oh, but snap. It, and, yeah, and it was just because I mean, fifteen minutes. I had I had three times I was able. And to then for AFK. what? It's not, right. it's not like we're pushing, like, high rating over here, you know right. what I mean? We're just, like, you know. Vegas' rating was, like, 400. My two's rating at the time was, like, only 1,200. My two's is, like, 900. It's really crappy because I don't do a lot of threes. I do. <laughs> Whatever. Your priest? My priest? Is that what you said? Priest. No, three. Oh, your priest. No. I thought you said your priest. I'm going, oh, here we go. As a priest. <laughs> I do. She's a little mini gnome. But that's, uh, that's. So you it off yourself? What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually working on a, a, a healing monk kind of fancy, and it's a gnome. It's a gnome, which is going to yeah. be amazing when I take that into arenas when she's uh, when she's 100. But she's adorable. Uh, yeah, she's adorable. But anyway, so we didn't really have. Uh, I think that's pretty much it for the week. We're coming close to time. Thank you guys for spending the hour with us that you do every week. We really appreciate it. Make sure that you guys go to PwnCastDailyQuest.com and check out what we're doing there. It's still awesome as ever. Facebook.com slash PwnCast. If you need to get a hold of Fryza, Fryza's battle tag is? Uh, Frosty1321. Hit him up. Make sure when you send him an invite that you put a note as to who you yes. are and what it is you, you where you're coming from because he won't remember. He'll accept and be like, hey, who's this guy three months later? So also be <laughs> cognizant of the fact that he's always in – when he's on, he's usually in doing something, whether it's RBGs or arenas. If he doesn't respond to you right away, don't unfriend him because that's mean. Don't unfriend yeah. him. Just wait. <laughs> uh, you could get a hold of Lycan at Lycan at Pwncast.net or on the Facebook page. You can get a hold of Hots for Shots in his various – everything with Hots for Shots in it, whether it's Hot Facebook or email or whatever. You can get a hold of him. He does have his own Facebook page. Uh, um, one thing that I actually want to start doing is helping people, like taking people into LFR with me um, and right. showing up the ropes that way. Uh, because I've noticed a lot of people struggle, and with that whole people coming up to me, like with the bear thing, like one, they were trying to feed me information. That was the incorrect information. So you're saying if people want to LFR with you, they could contact yeah. you on your battle tag, which is what's his battle tag, Lycan? Uh, Hot 1796. Hot 1796. Yeah. They can contact you on their battle tag, and you will go with them through LFR. Possibly yeah. show your boobs. Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Uh, that's that's <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, Price has, has already to... set you a whisper in game to get it on that action. <laughs> <laughs> they already whispered you. Um, I plan on trying to do it uh, around certain times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to make a schedule for it. But if I'm logged on and you send me a message, go for it. Sweet. Uh, you wanna... Thank you guys for yeah, joining awesome. us. Before I end, I don't want to forget. I do need to do a shout out. Uh, Dune Rain. Dune Rain joined joined today. If I butchered your name, I apologize, but I do know that you're a boy because I asked you if you're a boy. He joined the guild today and brought a few of his friends. He's been a podcast listener for about the last four or five months. Welcome to the Writers Rohan, and thank you for listening to the podcast. He did say that he was going to roll a druid to play with Fryza, and then decided that he did not know how to play a druid, so he stuck with his rogue. Uh, so that's what he's. <laughs> that's what he brought to the guild. I think he just dinged 100, but yeah, he. <laughs> So funny. He did. He did awesome. specifically say in the whisper, "I was gonna roll a druid to play with Fryza, but then I realized that I don't know how to play a druid, and I prefer my rogue." <laughs> <laughs> hey, rogues are great too. You know? There's never enough rogues queuing for anything. That's true. That's so true. as long as you're friends with me, I'll take you for a ride. That's right. So uh, make sure <laughs> that you what? I'll take you for a ride into a tree. I'm just saying. But we pretty much <laughs> these guys. We're gonna get out of here and uh, go do whatever weird shit it is we do after the show. Thank you guys for watching and listening and we're going to get out of here. And Bye. everybody remember this out of fork in my hand. <laughs> everybody remember this. When you see the broccoli, kill the broccoli. Kill the mother <laughs> druid. Yes. Kill that broccoli. Bye. Bye. Oh my god. That was like oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how I ended up with this fork in my hand. That was really I don't scary. Know. I thought you were going to tell me. I don't know what to do.